Hi everybody, Dr. Nikita Bizniak, and here I'm with the amazing super therapist. Leanne. Hi. And we are going to take you guys through some of the peripheral nerve pathways to make exams easier for you for basic anatomy and also for your board exams. So to start with, we'll go through the radial nerve to begin with. So radial nerve, we'll have our arm in this position right here, coming off of the brachial plexus, it's going to run through. So basics off the brachial plexus, of course, are going to be below the clavicle, underneath pec minor, then it's going to come out through the axilla, and the radial nerve goes through the triangular space at the back of the arm and wraps around through the spiral groove. As it comes down, it stays deep to the brachioradialis and is going to send off a superficial and deep branch and run all the way down and supply the cutaneous innervation on the back of the skin right here. You should know for your exam purposes that the radial nerve supplies everything on the back of the arm. So that means triceps, all of the extensors are all supplied by the radial nerve and cutaneous innervation is in this area right here. If you have a lesion of the radial nerve, you get something called wrist drop and so the wrist flops down like that perfect <laughs> All right. for the specific muscles we'll just list them over here on the side but pretty much if it says extensor across the back or if it's a tricep that's going to be the radial nerve next nerve for us to look at is the axillary nerve and for the axillary nerve we can know that that comes off the brachial plexus mainly the C5 spinal levels make it up and it wraps around coming through the quadrangular space here at the back and is going to supply oh yeah we'll get her to turn yeah the turn around maybe maybe to right about there okay we'll get her to turn around right about here and the axillary nerve would come out it supplies the deltoid and teres minor muscle it also supplies the C5 dermatome, which is cutaneous innervation over the lateral part of the shoulder right here. So that's all you really have to know for the axillary nerve. If you have a lesion with the axillary nerve, you're gonna have weakness in shoulder abduction, so you'd resist that, and you would also see numbness and tingling over this area right here. Next one is going to be the musculocutaneous nerve. So the musculocutaneous nerve, we need to know it comes off of the brachial plexus, of course. And on every cadaver dissection I've done, I have seen this nerve run through the coracobrachialis muscle, where it then goes deep to the biceps brachii and superficial to brachialis and supplies these anterior muscles of the arm, allowing you to do flexion of the elbow and flexion of the shoulder in this location. The other thing the musculocutaneous nerve does from the name it tells you cutaneous is going to give cutaneous distribution over the lateral side of the forearm right into this region right here. If I have a lesion of the musculocutaneous nerve I will see weakness of biceps or elbow flexion with brachialis or I might see weakness of shoulder flexion and you can also see numbness and tingling over this region of the forearm. All right, our next nerve that we're going to talk about off the brachial plexus is the ulnar nerve. And you should know the ulnar nerve comes off the lower portion of the brachial plexus, mainly fibers C8, T1, some C7, but lower part of the brachial plexus. It runs off the lower brachial plexus, below the clavicle, underneath pec minor, and it stays medial on the arm right here between the biceps and triceps, and it runs with the median nerve and the brachial artery down through the medial side of the arm. But the ulnar nerve goes posterior into the ulnar groove and then once you get posterior here and actually I'll just get you in this position right here then what it does when it's running posterior is it goes between the two heads of flexor carpi ulnaris and stays deep and sends off branches that supply the flexor carpi ulnaris as well as half of the flexor digitorum profundus and continuing further down it'll run through the tunnel of Guillon and mainly supply this side of the hand so the ulnar side of the hand if you want, you can look for weakness from the ulnar nerve, either in flexion into this movement right here, flexion and ulnar deviation, or you can see numbness and tingling over the C8 dermatome, usually is where we tend to see it. The other thing that you should remember, where students always get tricked with this, is the ulnar nerve also comes all the way over here and supplies the adductor pollicis muscle as well. Otherwise, all the muscles you can see just up here on the side, and that's the ulnar nerve for you right there. If you hit your funny bone or you do a Tonell's test, also known as a distal tingling on percussion test, you would tap here and get numbness and tingling into this area or tap into the tunnel of Guillaume and also look for it, numbness and tingling in that region as well. Anything you want to add, super therapist? That is excellent. I think you covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So the median nerve we're going to talk about next, and that's a big deal. When you look at most upper extremity neuropathologies, they are associated with the median nerve. Carpal tunnel syndrome, thoracic outlet may be mainly involved around the median nerve. So first thing to get, spinal levels that make up the median nerve are, it actually goes all the way C5 to T1, mainly C7, C6 comes off of the brachial plexus, runs through the scalenes, below the clavicle, below pec minor, and runs with the ulnar nerve across the medial side of the arm right here, and the brachial artery at the same location, and the median nerve branches and goes to the anterior side of your forearm. The ulnar nerve would have gone posterior, but the median nerve goes anterior through the two heads of pronator teres. 
crucial that anybody who has a median nerve issue that you evaluate the pronator teres muscle. And in fact, flexor digitorum profundus and superficialis for those interface as well. The median nerve comes down and supplies all the muscles on this side of the forearm and goes into the hand through the carpal tunnel and a lot of people aren't aware of this. The median nerve is as big as about three of your tendons that run through that carpal tunnel. People do not realize the size of the median nerve until they actually see it on a dissection. But anyways, the median nerve runs through here and is going to supply this side of the hand. It supplies motor supply on this side of the hand and also gives you cutaneous sensation through this region of the hand right here. If you have a lesion of the median nerve, what do you tend to see if it's been longer standing? Number one, you can see weakness in flexion of the hand, so you have weakness in resisted flexion, or you can also see atrophy over top of the thenar eminence as well. Both of these are significant findings, as well as the numbness and tingling into the fingertips. And another point to make around carpal tunnel syndrome, if it's really carpal tunnel syndrome, what do you typically see? You only see the numbness and tingling into the fingertips. There's another branch off the median nerve that not a lot of people talk about called the palmar branch that comes off before the flexor retinaculum or the transverse carpal ligament and supplies the anterior palm of the forearm. So if I'm seeing a patient and they have numbness and tingling in the fingertips, I'm probably going to look into the carpal tunnel and I'll probably do a median nerve test, maybe a phalans test, maybe a reverse phalans to look for aggravation of symptoms. But if they have numbness and tingling and it's in the palm of the hand right here, that means I need to check somewhere else along, somewhere else along that neurologic pathway all the way back up and even into the neck. All right? Anything else? That was excellent. Okay. All right. That's all I need to say all the time. That was excellent. Okay. All right.